turn of the century class poses outside Peter Mayer's school with their teacher, Ben Herzog. August Pullman, who would later become a physician in Melrose, taught the school around this time for $40 per month. He later wrote, I saw plainly that the country school teacher's vocation is not a good life vocation for a man in our country. Many teachers boarded with the Comrade Peter Mayer family, making their way to school across the field and over the fence. The class of 1956-57 is seen here with their teacher, Viola Donkey. painted the interior walls in 1987. In spring 1988, a committee was formed to discuss repairs to the building. Funds for paint came from the Picture It Painted program of the Minnesota Department of Trade and Economic Development, with additional funding for supplies from Lutheran Brotherhood Branch 8445. The Melrose Fire Department hosed the school down prior to painting. For four days in June, workers scraped, painted, and repaired the exterior and painted the interior ceiling of pressed tin. Volunteers came from the Melrose Lions, Scout Troop 68, the City of Melrose, Melrose Area Historical Society, and Stearns County Restitution Community Services Program. Hardware Hank handled the paint shipment, and Roger Paschke loaned scaffolds and supervised the work. Ruth Graham, who taught here from 1963 to 1967, was on hand in costume as the spirit of Peter Meyer School. I'm a historical character. <laughs> Ruth Graham and I taught only 19 years at all, but I went to the dormitory and the home school in between that. And then I lived on the farm for 10 years out there where the uh, turkey farm is now. Did you have a lot of bad students uh, no. around the world? Huh? Grace? Grace? Well, you, you, you just have to see people like me. You know, remember people are people. I did, when I first taught in Melrose, and a boy put his oh, yes, fist yeah. under my chin and he said, see that? And I went right, I went right to the superintendent, I said, do I have to take that? He said, no. And then he, he, he there was Frank for workers here as a coach, and he said he and his dad would come in up to take the superintendent and Mr. O'Rourke on the dinner again. I've seen a lot of words since I said talking. You want some Having fun? Yeah, blast. That's going to work good in there, I think. Might be a little dark, though, for your lighting. How do you feel about Should be fine. Step ladder belongs to you, Tony. Oh, okay. You can do this whole building and around all around as far as you can reach off that step ladder. Isn't that great? Smooth? <laughs> I better make an act of contrition. But I mean, 
And one of some of the men here said, uh, where do you get your cars? They're always starting. See, my son-in-law used to keep my car in trim. But Mr. Petermeyer had to give you a tow one day. Huh? Yeah, Stephen Petermeyer, it was quite a bit of snow. <laughs> yeah. So Stephen Petermeyer towed me over here. He, he insisted. I said, you don't have to. I can get all I said, I'll take you over. And he wouldn't take anything for it. I mean, you got some cigarettes. <laughs> How many grades did you teach here? Six. And we started out with eight. Uh, the two Seneca girls and Rose, uh, Rose, Rose Petermar, who's married to Jim Ottman, were the seventh and eighth graders. Last year you were there. Hmm? Last year you were over there for the school. Yeah. How did you manage to conduct six or eight classes at a time? Can you talk about how you arranged your day? Well, we, uh, when you step to think about it, a child who has gone through eight years of school on a school like this, they have heard all the classes from the first to the eighth. They certainly should know it by the time they got through. Isn't that right? You used to have Christmas programs out here. Well, we were just talking about that. I said I, I saw that every child got a part, and it made them uh, talk so that the, it was to the audience. And one lady said, this is the first time I've ever heard, understood every word. And I said, I was so smart. How did you feel when the country schools closed down? Was that a disappointment to you? No. Because they had a lot of advantages, but they lacked a lot of things, too. Such as? You see now, for instance, if a child were in a one, Pupil class. That is very difficult. If that child were very bright, they would think everybody would, should be the same. Well, in fact, Miss Christie, who was my uh, French and physics teacher senior year in, in high school under Mr. Kane, he was the one who invited me to come to Melrose in the first place. And he, he told Miss Christie to tell me that you couldn't, teach every, you couldn't teach everybody the same. They weren't all the same. They didn't have the same ability. The yard is so beautiful with many trees so that we would eat our lunch outside and you see that when we didn't have to sweep the floor. <laughs> then this little girl, six years old, came up to me and she said, teacher's a monkey. I thought, what? She said, teacher's a monkey. Monkeys eat bananas, teacher eats bananas, teacher's a monkey. <laughs> and someone asked me, did I uh, school her? I said, no, that's good judgment. A lot of high school people can't do that. <laughs> We had the recitation table over at that corner, and the, the children looked up at the clock. They said, it must be later than that. I said, I believe so, too. So we went outside. I said, I'll turn on my clock radio. I turned on to be greeted by, we're now standing in St. Patrick's Cathedral, praying for the dead president. And this being all Catholic students, and we were out in the yard, we said the rosary for us to be obeying several separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you might have one, two, three, four, five. Sometimes you'd get as high as having uh, four, six, or seven in the class, but most of the time you could get them around the recitation table. Refreshments for the workers were provided by Dell's Cafe. Funky's Home Plate, and Family Portrait Studio. Nineteen sixty-one. <laughs> I might have drugged that out here. <laughs> because my dad always took the National Geographic. And I give it to my grandchildren now. Oh, priming, priming. You're the prime minister. Yeah. I don't want people to think I was trying to become important. I'm not. <laughs> With its new coat of paint and other repair work,
Petermeyer School is ready to face the weather for a few more years.
Special assistance was by Mickey Loveless with music by Sandy Carlson. <laughs>